Hi everyone, Mark here and welcome to the fifth video in our Advent of Code series. Let's have a look at what the puzzle for day five is. Okay, in this puzzle, Santa has to decide whether his strings are naughty or nice. And the way that we know if a string is nice is it has to contain at least three vowels, it has to contain at least one letter that appears twice in a row, and there are a few naughty strings that it's not allowed to contain. Okay, so this shouldn't be too hard. As usual, um, it's given me my own set of strings to test. Um, so let's head over to LinkPad and have a look at how I initially tried to solve this in C Sharp using Link. Okay, so here we are in LinkPad and I've got my very long list of strings that I need to check and there are three things we need to check. Um, first of all I need to check does the string contain three vowels and so the way I decided to do this was I've got a little array of vowels and then I make a little function that takes a string and returns a bool um, which you can use a predicate to do that. A predicate is just a function that returns a bool and I say if the string has any character which is contained within my vowels array then I'll filter it to just contain vowels and then I'll take up to three elements from the resulting sequence and if the length of that sequence is three then I know that there are at least three vowels in the string. So that's that's seeing whether we've got three vowels. Um, what about does it have a double letter? Well the way I decided to solve this was using a method from morelink. Now I've talked about the morelink NuGet package uh, a few times before in this series. It adds a lot of really useful um, additional extension methods to link. And one of the methods it's got is called pairwise. And pairwise gives you all of the pairs of adjacent elements in your sequence. So I'll get the first two characters and then the second and third and then the third and fourth and so on. And so what I can do is say take all of the characters pairwise and see if any pair has the same two characters and if that's true then we have a double letter. Finally we need to check that our string doesn't contain any of the naughty strings which are here A, B, C, D and so on. And we do that just by saying um, for each string for the string that we're checking, are there any elements in the naughty string where our string contains that substring? And so finally, I made another predicate that combines those three conditions. It has three vowels, it has double letter, and it doesn't contain a naughty string. And so having set up these helper methods, I was then able to split my input on new line and filter out all the nice strings and then count them. And that works absolutely fine. If we run that, I get 236. Let's just have a look at the second part of the problem before we talk about how I solved it in F sharp. So for the second part of the problem, Santa has changed his rules about how to decide whether a string is naughty or nice. Now it has to contain a pair of two letters that appears at least twice in the string without overlapping. And it has to contain at least one letter which repeats with exactly one letter in between. Okay, so this is a little bit more tricky to do in Link, but let's head back over to LinkPad and see what I came up with for this. Okay, so to decide if it contains a non-overlapping pair, um, first of all, I select each character and its index within the string. Then I do a pairwise operation, so using pairwise again, and we make a new uh, string out of the character, the first and second characters in the pair. So basically we're getting the first two um, strings, but we have the index as well of where that pair starts. Then we group them together. So now we've got groups of all the pairs of letters in the string. And then 
we say we want to find any groups with more than one instance. So that checks that we've got a repeat of this pair and it, the instances must be separated by at least an index of greater than one. So that gets rid of the overlapping pairs. And so if there are any groups that match that condition, then we have a non-overlapping pair. And I will admit this is quite a convoluted solution to this problem. What about the other condition? It contains duplicates separated by one. Well, it's a similar type of thing. We select each character in the string and its position. We then group by the character. And then we find any groups where the count of that character is greater than one. And if we look at the pairs of elements in each of those groups, where the starting position of the first character is exactly two different from the position of the second character. So it means that they are separated by one letter, dot any. And yet again, I will confess, this is a very convoluted solution. And then I made another predicate that combines those two. It contains a non-overlapping pair and it contains duplicates separated by one. As you can see here, I did need to write out a number of little test cases to check that these uh, complicated link um, queries actually did work. And then when we run it, we find out that Santa has got a lot more strict about who is naughty and nice. There are now only 51 nice strings. So this works and it's fine, but as I've already hinted, it is quite complicated. And it just so happened that I was looking on Twitter and I saw someone tweet about uh, day five's advent of code challenge. And they mentioned what a great um, solution regular expressions would be for this particular problem. And of course, it suddenly hit me. I hadn't thought of that at all. And it's ironic that I hadn't because in my last link challenge that I set on my blog, I'd even included a problem that regular expressions are really useful for solving. But I didn't think about it. And that's quite a common problem in programming. You think of one way to solve something and you just head off in that direction without ever thinking maybe there's an easier way. And when I looked at this person's solution, let's have a look here, because they posted a link to their GitHub repository and they'd solved it in Ruby, okay, which is not a language that I use. Um, this person is Mermop on GitHub. And look how simple this is. Um, just go through each of the strings and then do these three regular expressions. Okay. Um, now I'm not a regular expression expert. And in fact, of these three, I think I could do the second two, but the third one, um, this one here, I wouldn't know the syntax off the top of my head. But um, let's go back to Linkpad and look at this translated into C Sharp and see if we can um, learn how these regular expressions are constructed. So here is Advent of Code Day 5 solved with regular expressions. I'll just scroll to the bottom. And so you can see here I've still got my three predicates. But to find out if it's got three vowels, I simply need to use regex is match, and it contains a letter in the set of vowels, followed by zero or more characters, followed by another letter in the set of vowels, followed by zero or more characters, followed by yet another letter in the series of vowels. So that's a nice easy one. The double letter is the one I certainly wouldn't have known how to do. But basically we say we want to find a letter and this slash one plus means that there must be a repeat of that thing that we just matched on. Um, so that is a very elegant solution to find the double letter. As for finding the naughty string, well, that's really quite easy. We can just separate with a pipe character each of the naughty strings that we're looking for. And the rest of it's exactly the same. Is nice combines those three functions and our link pipeline is the same. We've just made these um, three helper strings more simple. And that is one of the advantages of breaking out into helper methods. It keeps our overall link pipeline nice and straightforward, 
even if our underlying implementation is ugly. What about the second part of this? Well, again, I um, borrowed the regular expressions from Mermop and it uses this clever slash one syntax again. So to, to find out if it contains a non-overlapping pair, basically we're finding a two character string of characters. So any two characters, and then there can be any number of characters, including zero, and then a repeat, exact repeat of that two character string. So that will find any pair with any number of characters between them, but it won't find the overlapping pair of AAA, for example, because this will be looking for two more A's, and so three A's won't match. And what about contains a duplicate separated by one character? Again, this is simple. We find any character, slash W, with something, any character in between, and then a repeat of that previous character. And so when we run this, um, again, we find we get the same result as we did with our extremely convoluted link syntax. So as great as link is for solving all kinds of problems, um, don't immediately jump to link. Do think about whether maybe other solutions like regular expressions will help you out. Let's just have a quick look at how I translated this into F sharp. I decided not to translate my convoluted C sharp solution into F sharp, but use regular expressions. But I decided that I would try and do a bit more idiomatic F sharp and create a Ruby like operator for doing regular expression matches. So in that Ruby code equals tilde is the way to do a regular expression match. And so I've created this operator that allows me to make my three helper functions in a very elegant syntax, just saying S equals tilde and then the regular expression. And then I can combine those into my is nice function um, very easily. Then it's a very similar solution. We split on new line, filter according to whether they're nice and calculate the length. And then I print it out to debug. And I've done exactly the same technique for the second method of deciding whether the strings are naughty or nice. And so there you go. That's how I solved it. Many thanks again to Mermop for pointing me in a better direction than my original solution. And of course, there might be an even better way. So if you think um, you can improve on what I've done, then do let me know in the comments. And hopefully I'll see you for day six.